awareness of my patterns and the things that I do and what I need and how I operate has helped me to pivot towards healthier processing mechanisms. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to talk about our attachment styles. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Leora Alexandra. Welcome to the Bee Community. On this channel, we talk about the law of attraction, spirituality, self-development, and so much more. Jupiter is on a scavenger hunt over here in one of my suitcases. So you're going to hear him moving around. Let the boy live, okay? Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about attachment styles today. We talk about a close but almost kind of distant cousin of this topic, which is non-attachment and detachment in spirituality on this channel. And often when I talk about that, I see that a lot of you draw conclusions about why are you attached to what you're attached to? And I thought, okay, well, this is such a, an amazing thing to analyze and to become aware of, to bring more awareness to the personality. And so let's talk about why we become attached to what our attachment styles are and how we can navigate it to, to have healthier attachments, right? I have a friend who the second we have any sort of conflict, no matter how big or small over the years, over the last 20 plus years of our friendship, she needs to see me face to face to work things out immediately. If I don't answer right away, she'll experience a lot of anxiety. She'll be really emotionally distraught. Me, on the other hand, I need five to 10 business days just to process what I'm feeling. If I have any emotional conflict, I need to sit with it for at least a few days, if not months, if not honestly, years in some situations. I was just thinking about a recent situation in which I still haven't dealt with it, but I'm going to very soon. Um, and that's not, you know, I do need time to process my emotions, but it's not healthy to not deal with things. So both of these reactions, both of these ways of handling things are not the best for us. And they're keeping us away from having happy relationships. The way that I used to be is if I had to confront something right away, as it was happening, I would actually become really panicky, really distressed, really overwhelmed. For example, my friend tends to be insecure, attached. She wants to feel security from her partner. And the tricky thing is that sure, you can feel that security from another person for a while, but not forever. That's not sustainable. And your partner, even if they're the most secure attached person, they're going to go through their own stuff. They have their own life path. And so it's really important to be the own well of security for yourself in order to have happy and healthy relationships. And that's also friendships, family relationships, co-worker relationships. This is not just romantic. It's for all our relationships. Before we get started with today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor today, Green Chef. You guys, between work, workouts, cleaning, social life, and self-care, who has time for meal planning? That's why I'm all about making life easier and tastier. So enter Green Chef, the CCLF certified organic meal kit company that saves your sanity. Green Chef sends you step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured premium ingredients right to your door. They offer options for every lifestyle, keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and even gluten-free. And you're getting organic produce and premium proteins. So you know you're eating sustainably and you feel good about it. My favorite thing is that I get to learn new recipes because of the variety of meals they provide that change every week. You guys, this truffle mushroom risotto with carrots was insane. And it's not something that I would have cooked myself or even thought about, but now I know how to cook it and I can impress my guests. Also, we get to cook together and learn new recipes, and we have everything that we need delivered to our door with pre-measured ingredients, pre-made sauces, so there's no food waste, and I get it right every time. Because Green Chef is sponsoring today's video, we have a promo code for 60% off, plus free shipping on your first box. Just visit greenchef.com and use code LIORA60. Try this as a date night or a bonding experience with friends, roommates, family, and show me what you make together. Thank you, Green Chef, for sponsoring today's video. So let's talk about what are attachment styles in case you're not familiar. As I was saying, I first found out about my own attachment style while in therapy and simply the awareness of understanding why I acted the way that I acted, why I was the way that I was, improved my communication with my loved ones immensely. And I was able to say, look, this is how I operate. Know that this is happening. I'm going to see how you operate and I'm trying to get to a healthier place. I started to notice when I would be running away or when I would be closing up and 
I could figure out why, what's the core cause for this. Being able to trace it back to the core wound allows you to be able to start to work on that wound. I do that in therapy a lot. It's really, really beautiful and really healthy because you unravel all these layers of yourself like an onion in Shrek, right? <laughs> so attachment theory was first proposed by John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth. And this theory suggests that the way that we bond with our caregivers in early childhood actually affects how our adult relationships will be. So we tend to form one of four primary attachment styles, secure, anxious, avoidant, or fearful avoidant. And I'm going to talk about each one of those. So I was avoidant before I started to lean much more towards secure attached. I'm still working through it. It's an ongoing process. Healing is never linear. There's good days. There's bad days, right? It's also about just accepting yourself. It's not real necessarily something that you're like, oh, I hate that I'm this way and I have to heal myself and I'll be secure forever. We all oscillate in and out of things. And if you are lucky enough to have a really good and non-traumatic and basically smooth sailing in, your, in the way that you bonded with your caregivers when you were younger, then you might be one of the rare ones that is secure attached without having to do anything. And that is really cool. And I'm going to ask you, questions that will show you how to know if you are secure attached so as i was saying i was avoidant until i became more secure while the friend that i spoke about earlier anxious attachment in fact many of the women that i talk to and that i help and a few of the men also that i see tend to lean towards anxious attachment now again nothing is wrong with you okay nothing's wrong with any of this it's not your fault it has to do with what your child self saw in early childhood and it's not necessarily your caregivers fault either because they have their own secure or insecure attachments that they're passing on to you there's nobody to blame here ideally we just want to start the pathway to secure attachment and to understanding all the things that may have taken us off the path so people with secure attachment will often feel really comfortable with intimacy they're usually really warm in their expression very loving and that will really benefit them in their relationships now people with insecure attachment styles like me us right anxious avoidant or fearful avoidant we struggle in relationships we tend to struggle in relationships or experience challenges that we really don't need to be experiencing it's like being a bird trapped in an invisible cage. We have the freedom to fly, but our perceived barriers hold us back. So similarly, our attachment styles may limit us, uh, but awareness can unlock that invisible door. So let's become aware of our own attachment style. Let's talk about these insecure attachment styles. And again, you can oscillate in and out of different insecure attachment styles. But the bottom line is that there's insecurity present there. So let's address it. So an anxious attached person may be overly independent. These are the people we would consider being clingy. They seek validation from their partner and from other people from outside external sources. They crave closeness, but they really worry that the other person does not feel the same way that they do and that worry leads to overthinking. They'll often frequently seek reassurance and validation from their friends about their partnership, their relationship, and they'll ask, they'll, they'll be a little bit needy with their partner for validation. In this state, it's really hard to trust your intuition when you have this insecure attachment. The ego clouds the whisper of our intuition and we just can't see reality straight when we get into a place where we're seeking that validation and becoming overly independent and not, we basically don't see reality for what it really is. Then there's avoidant attachment, one that I'm very, very familiar with. People who are avoidant attachment can be distant in relationships and they prioritize their independence over intimacy. They fear closeness, they fear commitment, and they tend to push people away. So imagine how much work I had to do to get to a place where I'm like, this is the love of my life. No more pushing them away. I'm ready to be in a committed situation, right? Avoidant people often feel uncomfortable with deep emotional connections and that can make partners feel um, neglected or unloved. So for me, the way that this manifested is I always felt like I wasn't good enough. So I might as well just push myself away. I might as well just leave or not be around so that they can be with somebody better. So I'm thinking that there's something wrong with me. So I have to put distance between us, right? I, I know that I'm not the only one that feels that way or that's experienced that. But the way that it plays out for your partner, or for people, for your friends is that you don't care and that you don't want to be around them and you're not willing to 
be there in the same space when conflict arises. Then we have fearful avoidant attachment who both crave intimacy but also are really afraid of it. These people may push partners, friends, family away because they're afraid of getting hurt but they secretly really don't want to be alone anymore and they crave connection. So think about a person who goes back and forth between showing up in your life and then pulling away between wanting closeness and being afraid of it. I've noticed that these are often the type of people that anxious attached people often will attach themselves to because they crave those moments of that closeness and that validation. And then this person, the fearful avoidant will become afraid, take a step back and the anxious person will take a step forward. And it's this dance of them taking a step back, step forward. So that's a very not healthy, relationship it's a not healthy connection and it can be healed by at least one of the people becoming a more secure attached person because when we have at least one secure attached person in a relationship they can be that strength they can be that foundation that stability and we don't rely on the secure attached person but we have something to model our communication and our energy off of right and then of course we don't just get a secure attached person and then we continue to be the way that we are, we continue to work on our attachment style. So I think that most of us just by hearing this can kind of tell where we are, but I do have some questions that you can ask yourself to explore this further and I'll write it down below. So these questions are, do you constantly worry about your partner leaving you? Do you feel a compulsive need to be close to your partner at all times? Do you find it difficult to share your feelings and emotions even with those who are close to you? Do you prefer maintaining a significant emotional distance in your relationships? Do you have mixed feelings about intimacy, desiring closeness, but also fearing it? Now, if you're interested in finding out exactly which one you are and you're, you're not really sure, I know when I heard it, I was like, oh, that's the one. There are actually quizzes online that you can take. Just search, you know, what's my attachment style. And remember, if you identify these patterns, this is not a verdict, it's just a starting point for growth and change. Like psychotherapist David Rikos once said, our wounds are often the openings into the best and most beautiful parts of us. So how do we work towards being more secure attached? This is a whole video on its own and I'm happy to create it if you'd like, but just quickly, the journey really begins, like I was saying, with self-awareness and also self-compassion. Identify your patterns, but don't judge yourself for them. Reflect on your past relationships and see how your attachment style may have affected the relationship, even if you know it ended amicably. See if there's anything from the past that's coming up in your current situation. And remember that this works not just for romantic relationships, but all other kinds of relationships as well. So after some self-analysis, the journey really calls on us to cultivate some self-love and emotional self-sufficiency. So doing things that nourish our mind, our body, our soul. Also doing things that scare me, like getting close and getting intimate, even if it scares me, right? Knowing that this is a fear that comes from the ego and not from the intuition. It was also reading about this. It was moving my body, walking in nature, writing, journaling. And for you, it might be an endless list of other things that feel great. But do those things, right? Prioritize doing those things because as you improve your relationship with yourself, you become more confident, you become more trusting in yourself and your attachment style can naturally start to shift into more secure. Like I said, I can do a whole video on this. Let me know in the comments if you'd like me to. But if you'd like to read books on this subject, I recommend Attached, Wired for Love, It Didn't Start With You, The Power of Attachment, and for the majority of us who tend to be anxiously attached, I heard that the book Anxiously Attached by Jessica Baum is good. Boom, bum. Journal about your feelings and your thoughts. Rather than seeking validation from your partner, validate yourself in this way, right? Become a safer space for yourself within yourself. So if you'd like to know more about my journey towards secure attachment and how we all can be practicing this, let me know in the comments below. Big shout out again to our sponsor, please support them it supports the channel leave a comment it really helps thumbs up if you like the video subscribe if you haven't already i love you thank you for spending some time with me today i hope you have a really good rest of your day and until next time as always keep your vibrations way 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 up bye <laughs>